Hey guys, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. I wanted to sort of change up the presentation today a little bit because I was going to just post a free uh, PDF file I have on uh, adult traumatic brain injuries, but looking at the file, I thought it would be kind of interesting just to sort of highlight three things that we can see in EMS and some important sort of uh, ideas when you're looking at these sort of injuries. And we're talking about hematomas, and you've got your epidural, your subdural, right? Um, and your epidural hematoma here, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, this picture here. But this is that collection of blood that you get in that uh, extradural space, right? It's above that, that meningeal layer, okay? So a lot of times this hematoma ends up being located in the temporal area all right and what actually happens is is that the meningeal artery gets lacerated so the laceration of this artery ends up in that expanding hematoma it ends up shifting brain tissue and you end up having to have immediate surgical intervention so what happens is if you don't treat a epidural hematoma you can start getting herniation in the brain and leading to brain death. So what you're going to see a patient with like this is going to have where they're going to pretty much look at you and act normal, but they're going to wind up rapidly having a neurological deterioration. Okay, and Some of the symptoms you might see are um, pupil uh, dilation on the same side of the hematoma, uh, changes in their level of consciousness, of course, uh, even things like posturing or even limb weakness or hemoparesis as well. So keep this in mind when you get a patient who has a head injury, sort of acting normal one minute, and the next minute they start acting uh, weird, the level of consciousness starts to change on you, uh, even pupil, they'll keep reassessing your pupils, and it could lead you along the path that this might be something that's evolving with patient. Okay, so subdural hematoma, this is the collection of blood that's below the dura, okay? Uh, usually it's, it's venous uh, bleeding that's going on. It's coming from the bridging veins inside of the head. Now, a lot of times these are the injuries you're going to see from things like MVAs, from falls, from uh, assaults, right? Now, you're going to, a lot of times the emergency room, not really good for us, but they classify these based on time, right? Usually something that occurs between 24 and 48 hours and is an acute uh, subdural hematoma. You have subacute, which is two days to two weeks even, right? So you can get a call for a patient who's complaining of, of, uh, of, of issues uh, maybe a week after the head injury, and you should sort of, you know, kind of suspect that this might be going on, okay? Um, a lot of times the treatment for this is going to be trying to get rid of the get rid of the clot that's inside the brain, get controlling that breathing, and, uh, you know, in the hospital, they're going to end up probably uh, positioning the patient in certain ways that's going to uh, help to re-expand the brain tissue and using gravity to help them do that, okay? So just kind of keep in mind that you've got, you know, the, this is the type of thing where it can evolve, you know, up two weeks, maybe even up to two, uh, up to three months, um, where it's more of a chronic sort of a chronic bleed going on. But just keep in mind that you know every patient's going to present a little bit differently. Okay, so uh, if you get a patient who maybe had an MVA or they fell or maybe they were assaulted and it's uh, two three weeks down the line, and they're complaining of some you know some issues, some confusion, maybe headache, you know anything that might go on with a head injury, uh, you might want to suspect that it could be a subdural hematoma got going on. Now the last one I want to talk about here, guys, is the intracerebral. Right now, this is something that is results when the bleeding is inside of the tissue okay and really only a small amount of blood maybe five cc's or so is gonna actually when wind up giving the patient a very uh you know adverse neurological signs and symptoms okay um a lot of times these are the injuries you're going to see with those depressed skull fractures with penetrating injuries to the brain and acceleration or deceleration injuries okay 
Um, do the type of patient you're going to have a sudden deter deterioration of neurological status, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and management for these types of patients might be medical, whereas pharmaceutical type of, of intervention, as well as surgical interventions, depending upon the size and location of the bleeding, which, of course, your uh, C CT scan is going to wind up uh, showing. Okay, uh, but again, keep in mind, it doesn't take a lot of bleeding when it comes to the intracerebral to start causing issues. Okay, so just remember, you've got a patient that has a sudden deterioration of, of uh, neurological status, it could be intracerebral hematoma. Now, for us in the field, guys, don't forget, we don't have CT scans. We can't tell if it's intracerebral, if it's subdural, if it's epidural, whatever the case may be, we have to treat our patients. But if you've got a patient who has a head injury or has some sort of head problem, keep in mind that it could be due to an, a bleeding going on inside the brain and treat them appropriately for that and transport them to the appropriate facility. All right, guys, that's it for today's Monday Minutes. I hope you can use them in your day-to-day -day activities. If you have some comments, questions, be sure to post them below in the show notes. Uh, until next time, as always, guys, this is Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours. Stay safe. <music>